uh, now we come on to stage two. The next stage is when the child starts actually to produce speech sounds. This occurs naturally as the motor org organization uh, of the articulatory system, that is, of course, the tongue and vocal cords and so on, advances as part of the overall development of the muscles and brain structures required uh, for bodily action generally, including control of arm positions, body postures and so on. Stage three is how does the child find the words. The child has to be able to pick out the individual words of the parent language from the stream of speech to which it is exposed. To the child, the sound pattern of these words, all these words, will of course be unknown. There has to be a process which enables a child to latch on to each word, to discriminate one word from another. This is a, a remarkable performance which many eminent persons have speculated about but without agreeing how this can be achieved. Chomsky s suggested that the child somehow has the concepts available before experience with language and basically learns labels for already existing concepts, the concepts referring to objects and so on. Wittgenstein says the word falls when is tempted to explain into a mould of my mind, mind long prepared for it. So, but what can be the link between the mould, uh, Wittgenstein's mould and the word, between the already existing concept and the word? Uh, this is the central problem. So, I'll deal with this more in stage four. How does the child find the objects and actions to which the words are to be attached? Well, it's a matter of vision, first of all. Vision is innate. Humans can recognize an object within a fraction of a second. Vision is by far the most important source for the infant's growing knowledge of the world. <clears throat> Very young children are able to recognize more and more visual objects and show that they can see them. They show that they can see them by reaching for them. And at four months of age, they can actually grasp them. So on to stage five. How can the child successfully link the word to the object or action? Or should I say how link the object or action to the word? The child knows many objects, actions, sounds, colors, etc., in the <clears throat> external world as well as in terms of its own body. For it to find the appropriate word for an object, the representation of the particular object in the brain has to be linked with the representation of the word in the brain. There's been a lot of research into the way in which visual objects are represented in the brain, and more particularly in the visual cortex, and in terms of the networks of neurons of brain cells associated with objects. What objects have in common is their physical form, their distinctive shapes. Neuroimaging studies have shown that uh, objects are recorded in terms of their shape. Not surprisingly, infants concentrate on shapes as a result. Words for visual objects are the first they acquire because they have shape. The link between the particular object and the particular appropriate word comes about as a result of the absolutely central motor character of the brain's operation. The brain is organized primarily to produce and control action. The brain's motor system is the key feature both for the visual perception of a particular object and for the production of the specific speech sounds which are required for the word to be linked to that object. Visual perception of objects is a, an intensely motoric process. The moulds into which, in the language development of the infant, the appropriate words of the ambient language will fall or be fitted, are formed by the neural representations of the shapes of the comp objects extracted from the infant's stream of visual experience by the remarkable processes of vision of the eye. 
The eye scans an object by a rapid succession of movements. Motor commands for the eye muscles produce complicated movement of the eye up or down from side to side and obliquely. Eye movements are composed of saccades and fixations. A saccade is a rapid movement of the eye to foveate. Uh, uh, the fovea is the central and most sensitive part of the retina, one salient feature after another. A fixation is a pause in the movement of the foveated eye when the final detail of the object at the point of foveation is to be examined. The pattern of the actions of the eye is the result of a complicated neural system, heavily researched but not yet fully described or explained. The outcoming of the scanning process is an extremely intricate network of movements and halts or fixations of the eye, more easily illustrated than described. A famous Russian neurophysiologist, Yarbus, used a photograph of a bust of the ancient Egyptian queen Nefertiti to illustrate this. He recorded the pattern of movements of the eye in scanning the photograph. The graphic which follows shows the complex pattern which resulted. So this is the bust of Queen Nefertiti and uh, you see the lines joining a very complicated arrays of uh, st points, fixations. You can see there's a concentration on the front and so on and the ear. It is from the motor record of the scanning of an object that the shape of the object is derived as a distinct neural representation a distinct pattern of nerve cell connections in the brain's cortical uh, visual and motor systems. This is how the mould or outline of the concept for a visual object is formed, to which the neural motor pattern required to produce the sound of the word, of the appropriate word for the object, is fitted. Stage 6. How is the appropriate word formed and found to be appropriate? in the sense of fitting into or being directly associated with the neural mould constituted by the representation of the uh, visual object in the brain, in the cortex. Consider what the situation for the infant or young child is. The child has been surrounded from birth, enveloped from birth in the normal case, in a stream of speech sound. The child has been able to distinguish and be responsive to speech sound as distinct from other sound. Speech sound has often occurred at the same time as the child is placed among objects to which words are eventually found to refer. The process can be taking place anywhere in the world in any language area. In each different language area a child will be exposed to a different set of words found to be appropriate for the visual objects which the child has already acquired, has experience of. How can all these words in thousands of different languages, multitudes of different words for the same sets of visual objects, be appropriate? For the time being, the question is to be considered for a single language, the speech and language by which the child is surrounded, in which it is submerged, as the child grows, becomes stronger and more complicated in body and brain.